Doing this album for you then? It's been really interesting. Obviously, you know, I got in and, and wrote with Danny and stuff and all. It, it's just a bit of healing in it too. And there was a moment, I'm not going to lie, where, you know, the idea of even going back out on the road was like, for me, it was a non runner. I was like, I, it was so tough because of, you know, what happened and losing Mark and all. I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then I just thought, well, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a year and see how it feels. I love playing. We, we really love playing live. It's, it's what it's all about. There's no better feeling. And as a musician, that's why you got into it, because yes, of, exactly. of how that felt and what it feels like to be in front of people. So I was like, OK, let's try it, just see what it would be like if we pushed on. And I think it, it really clicked in the last few months when we got on the guitar player Ben. It, it was like a reignition of that thing that wasn't there when Mark had gone. Um, and I didn't know could we do that again or could we find that again. And on, on the day with a couple of players, and then he just walked in and, and we were like, oh, and everybody changed the way they were playing. I was like, oh, here's that thing again. So it's been, it's been tough. It's been really tough. And there's not, like, we were in rehearsals working on something and we've got stuff on, on a computer and there was Mark's back of office there. I had to leave the room and go in. I got teary I'd have to get out of the room for a minute and go in and make tea because there's so many reminders, you know. There always will be. And it's everywhere. It's and a there's, journey. And there's so many firsts. Like today's a first now that we yes, haven't encountered. I, I was thinking that. As we Do you know what I mean? There, and yeah. I said that to Dan, we were yeah. coming in, I was like, oh, here's another first now. Yeah. And it's like, you just miss them all the time and you miss the, 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 the gags, even though me and him have a, the same, we still have that, but when there was three, it was, it was like, there was like a triangle going. Now it's like, Two one. <laughs> yeah, there's like a piece gone. So it's just me and him now to bounce off, and, and you do miss him in so many ways. And it's just like I know from losing my parents, um, the, the grief journey. But there's times I've been crying for them, and then I'm crying for him, and then I'm crying for them all. And then I'm like, who am I crying for? You know, and then you probably feel guilty for being happy in the moment. Oh my god! And you're like, I shouldn't be. Happy no idea. That. I couldn't even come post on my Instagram for months because I was like, I, I can't. I don't feel like I'm a. I'm, what's You're the not word? entitled to that. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah, I feel guilty. If yeah. I'm smiling, everyone's going to go, yeah. he's a fucking. And I was like, yeah. how, and we were like, how are we going to. How do we move forward? It's not rule book on it, you know? You're trying to navigate. And then I think about Mark and I think about him as a person and what I know of, of him as a person and all the years we were together and I think if he was here now what would he say and, I, and then I know what to do he'd carry, carry on, carry on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh he'd say dude keep, and vice versa if it's the other way around I'd be telling him the same thing keep, he would not want us to just put it down and walk away after everything we built it it's no way I know that so so I'm kind of proud for the fact that I mean the first two warm up gigs we did in the UK and we went outside to meet the fans and it was just a wave of grief it was, and we were in the middle of our own and very very tough and there's moments where you can feel it you push it down but let me tell you, it does come, and we've had moments where it's hit us later, and there's been times when we were in the first gig we did in Portugal, Dan, I got in the car, and he texted me, and he's like, are you all right, dear? Are you getting a bit triggered? I was like, yeah, just, just can't Too get much. my head around, yeah. you know, and I just go insular when I get quiet, he knows, he's after remembering something, you know, yeah. um, but over the last while, it's been great, it's been really positive, and just, just playing is the healer, that Amazing. feeling you get, yeah. you know, yeah, so. The album's a banger. Do you think? Great. Oh. Definitely, oh, all like, that you played were yeah. there. Like, oh my god. So, to answer your question, it's been tough, but but life is difficult. So, I think, see you, brother. Um, and you know, you just gotta push, we have no choice but to push forward. And we're musicians, so on we, we just go playing. And luckily, everyone's kind of there to stand by us and watch us play and allow us to evolve into whatever it's going to be. You know, yeah. it's been great. Have you previewed any of it to the Mark's family? Uh, yeah, uh, his wife, yeah. She yeah. loved it. She yeah. loves it. Yeah. So she's very happy and proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Paris, that's Absolutely. And it will be outstanding. I've seen you live loads of times. Clodagh, my daughter, I bring her along to the gigs. Oh, amazing. She texted her there saying cause it's her birthday in November. I said, Guess where we're going. Oh, amazing. And she's all excited. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah. yeah, no, live is where it's at. As I say, I think it's one thing hearing songs in a room like that, but when you see the band playing it live and you see them interacting emotionally and, and really going for it, that's where it's at. And now the new generation coming. Like you mentioned, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and it that's, is such a challenge. That's after giving us a kind of a bump on the man who can't be moved and break in and stuff. And it's just out of nowhere. Just yeah, they're, doing, they're doing their own videos yeah, to their songs. Yeah, yeah, and the numbers went. And someone told me there's some sort of a, a fantasy book collection or something that people are making using the songs to and coke that's out of the book. Mad. I don't know what it's called. Someone was telling me about that. I'll get on to a 16 year old. Yeah, and ask her. it's mad. <laughs> but you can see it like in the audience, they're singing along and stuff and on. So we're, we're just amazed that it comes out. It's just never know. That, that look train that comes in, you never know when it's going to be, you just have to be in the race. We're a work in progress, we've always been that way. You know, we've always been people that just show behind the curtain. 
you know what I mean? It'd be one thing to come out and be like, you know, really trying to ham in. But everybody knows this. Everybody knows that, like, what's what's there to hide at this point, you know? Everybody, I think, is living is living through this and living through grief with us. Uh, you know, I, I kind of forget as well, you've seen with the, the outpour and support when Mark passed. It's like, he's not just my brother, he's Ireland's son at the same time. And I feel like that I've we kind of tried to deal with that all, all last year. And when is the right time? You know, when is the right time for you to... Not to necessarily smile again, but to where you start to have to live, you gotta you gotta move on. It's the only thing you can do. So, I think Christmas time was a big one for me. Coming home, end up getting slosh drunk because I had so many triggers. I didn't realise Dublin's a big trigger for me because I, I you know I, I beg, borrow, and stole with this fella on every car in, in Dublin. You know, so to come home, um, I was like, I'm not gonna drink Christmas, and then came home before I I landed. I was on that bus plane. It. And I spent Christmas just like, oh, I'll just drink it, drink my way through Christmas because it was awful. And then I got back on 27th of December and I was like, that's it, it's enough, enough. So we kept up drinking, smokes, caffeine, all on the same day. Yeah. How did you yeah, so I was, I was no fun, <laughs> no crap. And it was a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I don't know. Um, I think it's got a lot to do with the grief thing, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, you good support. Well, I, so I have like, good support, but yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's like how you process it, yeah. and I don't feel like processing it drunk was the right way to do it, or to process it in any other way other than stone cold sober. It was part of the no, it was. You, you actually have to do that. You have to have. To yeah, I feel like you have to, because there's a lot of layers to get through, yeah. and all you're doing is kicking it down the road. I kind of feel, you know, sort of, he, he was cracking, He'd you know, he was cracking the whip. He, okay. Honestly, over those, I remember I was just trying to revise some of the lyrics, and I was like. Oh, what would he do now? Do you know what I mean? What would he, he, he'd say this shit and then can we do better? And I, the whole way along, I had to try to kind of revise with that and, and kind of in mind and stuff. But like I said, I think January was the first time and I was sober as well. I just started to feel, it's not good again, but just not as bad as I was feeling. And then with music, because I hadn't written for such a long time, writing was cathartic for me. Writing about him, it was because I couldn't write anything until I had that lyric in Gone. You know, it's like something that really I love as a lyric. You know, um, you know, and then also just paid homage to him. But it was also uplifting. So anybody who knows, uh, he might he might have spent some time on, but he was even spent five minutes. Knows how uplifting the guy was, and he's not like it. He honestly, he's not gonna look like he, he hated ballads. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he got he got to mid tempo. We can never make a ballad. We always made mid tempo sad songs. You <laughs> never had the ballads, but he fucking hated them. Yeah. So I know it, for me to like immortalise him in one of them, you. you know I mean? <laughs> so I just felt it was just apps, you know. Have a have a stadium bouncing around and singing to him or his memory. I think it's... What was your favourite part of the process of making out? Crying, just being emotional, you know, and letting it out because there's far few, like very few things that bring me proper tears, you know. But I think. Listening to a song that I either feel like my parents would be proud of, or Mark would be, or I, or I summed up like when I wrote that song "Gone." We, I wrote it. Uh, we must have been nearly 100 meters away from him where he was cremated. You know, so yeah, it was, it was such a mad thing because I finished the song, walked down around where where it was, and it was obviously only a few months previous to it, and it was just so surreal, such a mad moment. But very like I listened to the song three times, walked from bridge to bridge, and must have gone around, walked walk for about an hour. Yeah, it just felt like there was a bit of a, something that I had to get out, was out. You know, being a creative, I'm like, this is my time, I should be able to write stuff down, this is what I'm good at. And I, nothing was coming. And then it was only when that kind of lyric came, I felt like, uh, then the floodgates opened. And then, like, being able to get that into a song, um, and then, for like I said, it's one thing getting into a song, but then other people to like it as well, or want to listen to it. And it sounds like, a, you know, like a single, like almost like a Coldplay, you know, you can hear it in um, any stadium around the world, so... But I think my yeah, favourite part was the is all is always emotionally getting out what's going on. Like home is where the hurt is. That's been so, a song I've been trying to write for a long time. But the, it's you have to wait for the lyric to come along so you can kind of hang your jacket on it. Do you know what I mean? Your missus must be very happy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing you got right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, lo I love that song. That one. And, what, and, and, what does she think? She loves it. Yeah. She loves it. She more. She her favourite song is that your feet. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's directly, yeah. it's directly about her, you know. Again, when, like I said, we all kind of pour a little bit of ourselves into the love songs. But um, yeah, this one's like I said, it's, it's a really personal album. But they're all art in a way, yeah. you know. Yeah.
um, before you actually thought I was done. You had a bit of experience of relationships and so you know when you... You know when you know when you know. When you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, know, I knew when it wasn't right, but now I know that, I know that it is. 100% right. Yeah, she's great. Like I said, the, I met her during COVID. <laughs> and um, I think if, you, if you've met anybody and you've been any, with anybody through COVID, it's like you compress 10 years yeah. into those two years. Yeah. You learned everything, all the good bits, all mostly the bad bits, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, and if you get through those moments, I think it's like, um, I don't know, it's like a rite of passage or something. If you made it through those few years, then you know. Then also, you know, you don't get away because we're locked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I was locked up for her, she was locked up for me. She definitely got out, no, she definitely got out, like, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome, yeah. 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 She was it called? Trauma bonding. See, I got, yeah. my, I got my online PhD in psychology, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I miss you, and the feeling don't